Hi guys, it's MJ and in this video I want to talk about regulation. And regulation is something I really enjoy. It's quite a cool topic. Um, it is a little bit controversial because regulations have failed in the past and have created more problems than what they've been trying to fix. But it is quite cool. I mean, it is a biblical topic. I mean, right from the beginning of the Bible, you have Adam and Eve. God gives them a rule to follow. And then you have the Ten Commandments and then, you know, the whole Bible um, comes around regulation in some sense. So I like the fact that it is biblical. You know, it's been here since the dawn of time. Um, but it is something that we're still messing up with. We're still creating regulations that have terrible consequences and are creating market inefficiencies and have some bad things. So that's also one exciting thing about regulation is that it is an area that is evolving. It is constantly improving. So by studying this, it is a way that you could add quite a lot of value um, to the market. So what I've done is I've looked at regulations and all that type of stuff, and I've come up with something known as the regulation cycle. And what it is, it's six steps that I think regulation goes through. So what I want to do in this video is talk about this regulation cycle, and then I'm going to make separate videos on trust law, corporate governance, listing authorities, ethical issues, and so forth. Um, you know, so regulation is a very, very big topic, um, but like I said, it is one that is constantly changing. I mean, if we just look at regulation, so if we need to say, if someone to say, well, what is regulation? It, it is a bit of an abstract concept. Um, it's an abstract concept. It forms part of management. So the whole point of regulation is it's is some sort of management. Um, I have forgotten how to spell management. That's quite awkward. Anyway, some sort of management. Um, it consists of a whole bunch of rules and, you know, what to do, what not to do. Uh, it also has some sort of punishments. Um, and the whole thing is that regulation, you know, tries to protect, protect people, uh, reduce financial crime, all these various things. Uh, what can be done to regulations, they can be changed, uh, they can be enforced. Um, you know, there's all these things that can be done to regulation. Anyway, I want to focus on this regulation cycle. And yeah, let's let's begin with that. Like I said, these videos are a lot of my opinion. Um, the stuff I'm specifically talking about might not be in the textbook, so be careful. You know, don't quote me in your exam and then you fail and come and sue me. That wouldn't be too much fun. Uh, so yeah, just giving you guys that health warning. Anyway, regulation cycle, um, how I see it is that it starts with some sort of wrong. So there is a wrong in the world and we are unhappy with the wrong and we want to turn this wrong around. Um, this wrong could be known as the aims of regulation. Uh, some common wrongs are, there's, there's four main ones that we, we see in the notes. They are, um, you know, reducing financial crime, um, the markets being inefficient, uh, markets lacking confidence, and the final one is, you know, them being unfair, or how we refer to it as, you know, consumer protection. So these are the four main aims of regulation are trying to correct these wrongs. But it's because of these wrongs that we have regulation. You know, it's because we have sickness that we have doctors. It's because we have people breaking the law that we have lawyers. It's because we have risk that we have actuaries. And it's because we have wrongs in the world that we have regulations. So we have these wrongs. And how we see fit to, you know, stopping these wrongs is we set up something known as a regime. Okay, regime. Okay, my spelling is not on form today. Is that a spell regime? Um, okay, so you have these specific regimes. Now the regimes could be just very simply the law of the land. So the government, uh, it could be some sort of voluntary code. Um, another type of regime could be self-regulation. Another one could be statutory regulation. And I mean, you could even get like a little bit of a hybrid of all of these things. I mean, uh, law of the land will specifically be looking at trying to reduce crime. 
voluntary codes will try and remove inefficiency. Um, Self-regulations will try and focus on, say, you know, the confidence. And a statutory regulator will make sure that, you know, consumers are protected. But having said that, each one can do all four of them. Um, you could have a blend of it. Some rules could be law of the land. Some can be voluntary. Some could be statutory. Some can be self. So they're not their little closed off boxes. They are all kind of, you know, joint in there together. Um, so yeah, after you have a wrong, you set up a regime. And what these regimes do is they set up things known as rules. So let's, the next step in our cycle is rules. And if you, you see, the nice thing about my little regulation cycle, I've tried to make everything start with the letter R. Except for wrong, that starts with like a silent W, but you'll see all of them have R's in it. So anyway, we've got a wrong, we set up a regime, the regime then sets up rules. Now the rules is an attempt to right a wrong. So, I mean, for instance, it could be something like, you know, holding a reserve when it comes to an insurance company not being able to pay its clients when a benefit falls due, you know, that was unfair. So you can write that wrong by saying, telling them to hold, uh, hold reserves. The thing is, not all rules are that straightforward. Uh, you know, they, some of them can be quite vague and confusing. For instance, you know, what, how much reserve should you hold? You know, what percentage, what minimum amount? Um, because you could say, oh, every insurance company needs to hold a hundred million rand in reserves. And yes, that's great. That will, that will re really protect consumers if every insurance company had such a massive reserve. But then a rule like that is known as to be quite rigid, quite um, constrictive. Um, it could be like a little bit of a barrier to entry into the market because now only the rich can sell insurance. Uh, now they can charge high amounts because now they've formed some sort of monopoly. Um, you know, so you want to make sure that your rules aren't too rigid, that they stifle um, innovation and all these type of things. Another thing with rules is they do need to be constantly updated because people keep finding loopholes, specifically in finance, tax, insurance, all these type of things. When you have a lot of money and a lot of smart people and a very vague or weirdly confused um, stated rule, you're going to find a loophole. These guys, this is their day job. They will find a loophole. They will exploit it. So rules do need to be constantly updated. Um, they need to be updated with, say, new technology. You know, technology can now, uh, you know, cause certain rules to be void or say, hey, it can help the market or something like that. But one thing I do hate a lot about regulation is that instead of us saying, okay, guys, let's scrap that rule and let's restart, they say, okay, let's just make an amendment to that rule. Let's just add a rule on top of a rule on top of a rule. We're too quick to add rules and we're too slow to remove rules. And that's why when you look at accountants, they have these massive, massive tax textbooks that just contain all their rules and policies and what you can't do, can't do. And people have to dedicate their lives to understanding the rule book. And that's not fun. So that is one of the weaknesses or one of the things I don't like about um, regulation. Uh, let me just remove this over here so that we do have enough space for our little cycle. So yeah, that is the rules of regulations. Now, once a rule has been set in, there will be a response. So they will be told, okay, the regulation is that you need to hold reserves. Um, companies or individuals, whoever that rule applies to, will respond to the rule. They will either say, okay, that's great, let's set up reserves. They will take action to respond to the rule. Um, you know, that's kind of like the right thing to do. Um, so when we see a response to a rule, there should be some sort of, you know, change in behavior. Change in behavior, they're going to start doing new things, they're going to stop doing uh, bad old things. You know, the whole idea is to do the right thing. However, sometimes a company might disagree. They might say holding reserves or that amount of reserves is not actually the right thing to do. They might disagree with the rules. Um, they might say stuff that we're not going to do it. Uh, you know, and there, there can be quite a lot of tension between the corporations and the regulatory authorities. Uh, this is what makes self-regulation quite, quite an interesting one is that these guys understand the business the best. However, self-regulation you know, then you have to start asking questions, well, 
how independent are they, and oh, it can get quite quite complicated. But the idea is that there's after you set up a rule, there's a response. You either change your behavior and you do the right thing, whatever that is, big philosophical discussion you can have there, or you say, stuff it, I'm going to stay to my same ways. But what regulation does require is that after there has been this response, there does need to be a report. And a lot of people who start off with actuarial science and go into the working world, this is where you're probably going to start off, is in one of the most boringest things you'll ever do, is building reports. So what you do is you now need to report or um, you know create some sort of evidence, some sort of audit trail that you have been doing the right thing. So a report is something like an audit trail, um, it's evidence, it's documentation. It's very good. It's very good to create reports, but they're very boring to do. Um, and yeah, they normally give it to the junior staff to do it. And management will then look at the report's conclusions, or, or they will look at the, the report and then draw conclusions or, or decide what to do. But regulators will require some sort of report. You know, filling in your tax returns, that's a type of report. Um, filling out certain things, it's a report, it's big documentations, very important, and it is quite a boring thing to do. But something interesting happens with reporting and response. And remember that whole saying, two wrongs don't make a right? Well, some people actually disagree with that in the sense that what you can do is you can do the wrong thing. So you do the wrong thing. So you say, I'm not going to hold a reserve. But then you lie and you say that you have done the right thing. And then what that does is you will pass the regulation. So the regulation says you need to hold um, capital in reserve and you need to report on it. Some people will hold capital in reserve but fail to report it, they'll get punished. People who don't hold it to report but then lie and say that they do might pass certain regulations. And that's why regulations now becomes a little bit tricky because of this whole deal of trust. You know, people can lie, they can be dishonest. How do they get around that? They need to now send in auditors or have their own their own task force to go and check it in. And holding a reserve is quite a simple one. When regulations or rules start becoming more complicated, the policing around them also becomes more complicated. I mean, we have seen spectacular cases in the past, specifically, you know, companies like Enron, who have done the wrong thing, then lied on their report or lied on their financial statements, and, you know, bypassed regulation, and even bypassed auditors for so long. But in a perfect world, everyone responds, they do their reporting, everything's great. Uh, they're supposed to say in their report if they didn't hold enough um, reserves or they did or they didn't or what they failed to do and all that type of stuff. We do expect people to be honest in reporting. Uh, so hopefully they are. But uh, the idea is that after they've then had their report, so if they would then report say, no, we didn't hold enough reserves or we did, the regulatory body would have some sort of reaction. Okay. This is the final step in my cycle. They would have a reaction. The reaction is hopefully they would do nothing. If you did the right thing and you did all your correct reporting, you know, they, they don't do anything. I don't think there's many awards for, oh, you made the best report. Although there, there might be sometimes a reward for the safest bank or the bank that holds the most capital or the insurance company. But I, I haven't really seen too much of that. They should because it would be quite a nice marketing uh, ploy. Um, but normally there's there's nothing nothing happens if you do the right thing, but if you do the wrong thing, then that's where a lot of the reaction comes in, and they need this reaction because if they don't enforce it, if there's no punishment or something for for disobeying the regulation, then the regulation is pointless. So they will have some sort of punishment, just like like I said, it was it is biblical. You know the rule was don't eat that apple or that fruit thing um, Adam and Eve go and eat the fruit thing and God punishes them by kicking them out of the beautiful garden you know there was there was a punishment or the the rule was enforced and the punishment can be in the force of that they banned like Adam and Eve they were banned from the garden um, they could be imposed today we we issue a fine um, Adam and Eve didn't have money so they couldn't pay God a fine um, or they could be imprisoned you know, God loves Adam and Eve, so he didn't send them to hell in some dungeon or something like that. You know, he's quite a nice God. He just banned them from the Paradise Garden. Uh, 
I mean, banning, I think, is the best thing to do. You know, if someone's not going to hold reserves for um, insurance companies or, you know, they're not going to be doing that, I think the best thing to do is just ban them, say, hey, you're, you can't do it. You know, it worked for God. It worked pretty well. Just ban people, say you can no longer do this action. Fining is, it's a bit of a, it's, I think it's stupid. I mean, you, you don't hold a reserve for hundreds of millions. You do all these bad things and then you get a fine of a one million rand. You, you're like, oh, that's that's not bad. I'll just pay that fine, one million rand. Or you do something minor, like you you know you forget to cross your T's on the report, and then they find you a million rand, and you're like, whoa, 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 that's kind of crazy. So I mean, when it comes to the fine, you know, how big does the punishment have to be? How bad is the fine? A lot of times they'll impose a massive fine that the media will catch up on, but then if you follow the story, they settle for a much smaller amount. So fines are yeah. I don't, I don't really like fines. And imprisonment, I think that's completely extreme. I don't like prisons at all. Um, I think society needs to find a better way to punish people. Putting someone in prison is a very inhumane thing to do. But anyway, I'm going on to a whole sociological um, <laughs> aspect. Let's keep this up on finance. So I think that's bad to imprison someone just for any crime. You know, we have to find out some better solution. But anyway, specifically for, you know, not holding reserves and you get sent to prison, that's, yeah, that's, that's terrible. Finding what amount should be put in, you know, there's that whole big question there, and it might be too small, and then it's not really you know, worth it. I mean, if it's, not too, if it's too small, then it's not that much of a deterrent. If it's too big, you know, they're not going to be able to pay it. So I think the best one is just to ban people. Just, you know, if you're not going to hold real reserves, you can't sell insurance, you revoke your insurance license. I think Plain and simple. So if a company makes a mistake, they lose their license, tough luck, those directors get blacklisted, they can never be on another insurance company, and then you're hurting them, they're not going to be able to make money in the future, then they're going to be like, okay guys, let's take this regulation seriously, compared to say just paying a fine, um, or having a scapegoat that they then sent to prison, like the poor secretary or something like that. No, I'm joking. But anyway, so now, how does the cycle um, complete itself? The idea is that, if people are boycotting um, certain things or something like that, then the reaction would be either, okay, let's either change the rules, you know, let's make the rules better, let's add some more rules, um, let's maybe change the regime, let's maybe step it up from a self-regulatory body to a statutory regular body, uh, or the reaction might find out that there's another crime that people are doing. So this is where the, the cycle comes in. But the idea is that hopefully we, we have identified all of the wrongs. The regime can change, um, you know, and I think it's good. I think the, the most important thing when it comes to, to regulations is something like flexibility. Um, flexibility, again, I'm not spelling things correctly today. Uh, flexibility is very, very important. And I think specifically around technology improvements. So we are going through a bit of a tech revolution. A really awesome technology is something known as the blockchain. And what makes the blockchain so awesome is that it removes the dependency on trust. So before people, we had to just trust that people were doing the right thing. Blockchain is a way to remove trust. It's worked very well with you know concepts like Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. But I think blockchain can add a lot of advantages in administrative roles, specifically around regulations. It can streamline everything. Regulatory bodies need to therefore be flexible. They need to have an open mind. They need to consider this technology and see how it can improve the whole situation. Because that's the whole thing, is that there's costs everywhere. Setting up a regime costs money. You know, you have to have board meetings, have to file documents, have to pay people, administrative costs. Then setting up rules, they can stifle innovation, which is a massive cost to society. They can do this, they can do that. People have to read them, people have to study, dedicate their lives to it, it's time. So there are lots and lots of costs. Then creating um, reports or changing your behavior might require more funding. Uh, reports, you have to hire all these junior actuaries um, or junior accountants to, to compile all these reports. That's their salaries, that costs things. Then to go and punish them or to make sure that they actually did the trust, employing more people, and there's just more and more and more and more cost, 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 cost. That's what makes blockchain so cool is that it can streamline this process, can reduce costs, and can make society um, in a 
put it in just in a better place overall. So I think regulation is an exciting topic. Um, I don't want to go too much into the specifics because that's when it gets very boring, it gets very boggy, it gets very vague, it gets all weird, and it's probably going to change tomorrow. Um, also, each country uh, has probably a different set of regulations and rules. Each state in America has different rules and regulations. So it does get really confusing if you want to try and go into the specifics. But if you have a big overview, like what I'm trying to show you here with this regulation cycle, we can now apply this um, to the various uh, principles in you know, investment management and the securities industry, and we can see what is the best way to do regulation. Uh, because at the end of the day, I mean, we do want to right these wrongs, and regulation is a way to do it. So there we go. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And apologies for the spelling, but I will see you guys next time with some more videos around regulation.